Periscope, what's up? Greg Howes, Monday morning. Let's go. High energy. The start of another week. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I think I saw Isaac Watson's name going by on the on these uh, pop-ups. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Tammy, good morning. Adrian, good morning. Merrillville, the Perrys are here from Park Forest. Ethel in Memphis, good morning. Jonathan, I see you, good morning. What it do? Yeah, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Good morning. Y'all have a good weekend. The weekend went well for you. How was church yesterday? You have some good worship, some hot music, some hot preaching. The weekend was too short. <laughs> Ohio, good morning. I know it was short. I woke up this morning like, oh, Lord, it's Monday already. North Carolina, good morning. Church was refreshing. Excellent. Awesomeness, awesomeness, Fa fantastic weekend, wow, cool. Had some graduations, yeah, it's graduation season, isn't it? All the high schools are having their graduations, at least here in this area. I know some don't get out until June. You've been in a desert. Well, come on out of the desert. Come on. All right, Memphis. It was good for you. Great, great, great. Service was amazing. Excellent. Excellent. That's what we want to hear. Every pastor wants to hear that. Worship was amazing. Service was amazing. Preaching was amazing. Yeah, we want to hear that kind of stuff. Washington State, good morning. West Coast, all right. Angela, good morning. Monica, Mississippi, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Worship was pretty incredible. All right, good. I'm glad to hear it. Excellent. Very, very good. Good reports about church yesterday. Super. Well, this is Monday, the start of another week. I'm Greg Howes. This is Leaderscope. Welcome. And so we launch into another week of getting the day started and hopefully saying a couple of things that will benefit you, build you up, encourage you, help you, bring some kind of recognition into your life. So uh, we want that to happen for you. We do. We really do. This Wednesday night, we start up our Cornerstone Institute once again. This is where we present classes on Wednesday night. And so this Wednesday, we begin six weeks of classes. I'm going to be teaching a leadership class. Uh, Dan Johnson is going to be teaching an economic empowerment class for entrepreneurs. Uh, then Lester Brown is teaching a class on the book of Jude, the book of Jude out of the Bible, J-U-D-E, the book of Jude. And uh, then Burl Armstrong and Michelle Akins, along with Andre Ambrose, are teaching a class about the emotionally healthy believer. The Emotionally Healthy Believer. So we're looking forward to these classes. We also have our new members class on Wednesday nights. Uh, so if you're in the area and you'd like to come, you're very welcome. There's no registration fee. We do receive an offering in each class, but that's it. Uh, the classes go for six weeks, so we'd love to have you participate all six weeks if possible. So that starts this Wednesday at 7 p.m. 
for all of you in the south suburbs or in northwest Indiana. Um, I got up this morning and I was just kind of reflecting over the weekend and um, I, was, I was noticing all of the different cultures that I touched and experienced over the weekend. Pretty amazing, actually. And uh, I, I, I think it started probably with Friday evening. Friday night we had an event here at Cornerstone called Game Changers. And it was for children ages 6 through 13. And I'm telling you, the place was just like high energy with these kids. It was amazing. So our children's ministry people, Latanya Santiago, uh, Kendrick Watson, and, and the team, uh, they put this whole thing together for the kids. And it was just absolutely wonderful for the young children. And there, there was a particular culture. You know, culture is about how we do things. When you talk about your church culture, and every church does have a culture, by the way, when you talk about your church culture, you're, you're considering how your church does things, how you welcome people, how you worship, how you receive the offering, how you uh, give announcements, how you get information out, how you teach and preach, how you minister to people, how you pray for people. All of that is part of your culture, how you treat one another, how you respond to one another. Are you quick to respond to emails and, and phone calls and voice messages and texts and so forth? All of that has something to do with culture. And so Friday night at Game Changers, there was a particular culture in that place. Saturday morning, I went to the Transform Men Conference at Destined to Win Christian Center in Park Forest, and I was in another culture. This was a men's culture. Nothing but men there. And it was amazing to see. I think uh, I saw Kelvin Easter say there were over 80 men gathered at DWCC on Saturday for this conference. And uh, the speakers were Kelvin Easter, Dion Campbell, Elton Watkins, David Rogers, and I believe there was a, a panel or two as well. Um, but the culture was, was male. The culture was manly. It was a culture of men coming together doing things the way men do things, worshiping the way men worship, responding the way men respond, fellowshipping the way men fellowship. So it was a men's culture on Saturday. Now, I couldn't stay there all day because my son Jonathan, many of you know Jonathan is Down syndrome, he is participating in weightlifting for the Special Olympics. And so he had uh, a fundraiser event Saturday, raising funds for to help pay for the weightlifting team to go downstate to the Special Olympics. So uh, I took him to the fundraiser over in Mokina, Illinois. And at the fundraiser, they were lifting weights. It was actually in a, a gym, a workout place. And uh, they were lifting weights. And, and I discovered, I noticed for the very first time, that there is a weightlifting culture. There's a weightlifting culture. There really is. Um, they, they get these guys and girls, men and women, get them together and they get them lifting weights. So you have all these special needs people, handicapped people, whatever term you would like to use, and, and they're all in there lifting weights. But there's a culture to it. When Jonathan was doing the deadlift, where you lift the bar up off of the floor, there, there's, a, there's an entire culture about that. There was a, a, a coach in front of him telling him where to put his feet by the bar, telling him how to position his hands, giving him words of encouragement before he actually lifted. There was another man behind Jonathan, uh, kind of like we would think of as catchers in an altar service. <laughs> and this guy was behind Jonathan with his hands out, his hands out like this. And he's just there to protect Jonathan in case when he lifts up the weights, he gets off balance and begins to fall backwards or something. This guy is there for support, but he's also encouraging. He's also uh, uh, spurring him on to do his very, very best. And so once Jonathan goes to lift up the weight, the dead weight, the deadlift, uh, everybody in the place, and there was probably, I don't know, maybe 100 people there, something like that. But everybody's cheering. Everybody's celebrating. Everybody is 
just going nuts over this next lift that the person is going to do. Now this happened to be Jonathan's personal best. He, he did a deadlift of 215 pounds. So this was his best. So another thing I found out in the culture is when you do your personal best, you get to go ring the bell. They have a bell on the wall with a, with a string on it, a rope. And you go and you, you ring the bell. You ring the bell when you do your personal best. And then everybody claps, everybody hoots and hollers and celebrates because you have done your best. But here's the deal. Even when somebody tried to lift the weight and they couldn't quite get it done, there was even more celebration, more affirmation, more encouragement, more building up than for the guy that actually lifted the weight. Such support, such such celebration, such affirmation, such believing in each other, even for the person that couldn't quite get the weight up off of the floor, people still were celebrating in what we would probably term as a failure, we would term as a shortcoming, maybe a mistake, maybe an error, but people were still celebrating the individual and saying things like, you're going to get it next time. You can do it. You've got this in you. You can make this happen. There's a weightlifting culture. It was amazing. And then yesterday, of course, I was at Cornerstone, and we have our Cornerstone culture. I'm, I'm accustomed to that. And then last night, we did our flow gathering, which is all about the creative arts. So we had people there who were... Uh, singing, we had dancers, we had people doing spoken word, we had people doing poetry. Uh, it was it was an amazing thing. We interviewed a couple of people about how they got involved in the arts and and how they stir up their passion and how they get their different pieces. How do you how do you write? Where do you get your ideas? And and, and all of this with the creative arts also has a culture to it. It's amazing how the different ones support each other. And they encourage each other. They give each other high fives. They congratulate each other. They strengthen each other. They celebrate one another. They give affirmation to one another. So as I was passing through all these different cultures over the weekend, it just uh, encouraged me to think about the church and the kind of people that we should be with one another so that we're not pushing people away but we're drawing people in. There's a scripture in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23, where the Bible says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he is faithful who promised. Our God is faithful. So we're going to hold on to our confidence in him and our confession of hope, which is high expectation based in a God who cannot lie. We believe that his word is true. Then he says in verse 24, and let us consider. So in verse 23, it's let us hold fast. If you back up to verse 22, it's let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. So verse 24 is let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Stirring up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So as I was reflecting on the weekend and reflecting on these cultures that I went through, I was just inspired to believe that we as the church can be people who also support one another and we believe in one another, and we affirm one another, and we encourage and we strengthen one another. Even when we fail, even when we mess up, even when we make mistakes, that we're still there for each other, cheering one another on, encouraging each other. If they can do that in the weightlifting culture, and if people can do that in the creative arts culture, then I believe we ought to be able to do that in the body of Christ. But sadly, the opposite is so often true. We find ourselves in competition with each other. We find ourselves trying to prove that we're better than somebody else. 
When we see somebody fail or they mess up, they make a mistake, we tend to push them down even more. We judge them, we talk about them, we come with a spirit of superiority, thinking that we're better than them because that particular thing has never happened to us. But I believe the Bible still says in the book of Galatians that when a, a brother falls, that we should consider ourselves lest we would end up in that same situation. And because we're considering ourselves and we're considering them, we have mercy and we grab them and we pull them up and we get them restored to where they need to be. That's what the kingdom of God is supposed to be like. And so we have so many churches, uh, excuse me, so many people that are criticizing the church today. They're telling us that the church is full of hypocrites, the church is cold, the church doesn't love, the church doesn't care, the church doesn't, doesn't take care of people the way it's supposed to. So we hear all of this criticism, and I think probably a lot of it is valid. So we have to do something to begin to turn around the uh, perception that people have of the church. We've got to turn that around and show them what the church is really supposed to be like. And if you are one who is critical of the church in that way, I want to encourage you. How about you become a solutionist along with people like me? And let's look for the solution. Instead of just standing back and criticizing and finding fault, how about we jump in and get engaged and get committed and become solutionists and solve the problem? And let's truly cheer one another on. Let's truly affirm each other and believe in each other and love each other and add strength to one another and exhort each other and edify one another. And I believe if we can do that, the church is going to be a lot better off. And if the church is a lot better off, the world is going to be getting better as well. Amen. Well, I hope this is encouraging to you and um, strengthening to you. I really do. I love you. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming on Leaderscope with me this morning for these few minutes. We'll get your day off to a good start, hopefully. And I'm believing that you have open doors in front of you today. You have opportunities. You have divine connections coming into your life. You have divine resources coming into your life. You have favor with God and man. Today is going to be a good day for you. I celebrate you today. I believe in you. I affirm you as a man of God, as a woman of God. I believe in you. Be encouraged. Thanks so much for being on with me. Have a wonderful day. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'll talk to you soon.